Hello everybody again. This is week three and this week we're going to talk about IDSs, IPSs, firewalls and honeypots. Uh, I hope you had time to watch the demonstrations before and I hope you enjoyed it. Oh. My contact details didn't change, it's still the same. So if you need me reach, if you need to reach me out, you can just uh, please your first contact point should be the forms. If you have a personal or private questions, please feel free to email me as well. So why should we use an IDS and IPS? Do you need? Do you really need to spend some money on firewalls, on security hardware or software? You have two options. Option one, you can just buy this. Uh, security products or option two, you can hire this gentleman here with his uh, gun and I hope he can protect you from uh, DD processes, from uh, sniffing attacks, from different different attacks guys. So uh, I know it's a bit hard to invest all this money but uh, I know the main important thing is here, you have to sit down and do a risk analysis. A risk analysis of what is going out in the world and what is going out internally in your network. Then based on that you should decide if you really can afford this product or not. You saw the results last week. If you don't have a proper security products, you will get probably hacked or you will get some different attack types which will put you out of uh, out of the internet or many other different attack types. Okay, so first of all, let's understand the IDSs together. The idea of IDSs is to monitor all your inbound and outbound traffic so it can have a look and identify the suspicious patterns on your network, which includes also an attack. The IDS job is to analyze the information which is coming in and out exactly as demonstrated in this little picture here and to find some uh, signatures or maybe some attack patterns. If you remember many 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 years ago there was, let me just draw it to the screen here, uh, the idea was a couple of years ago, you know what, this is my network this is the internet, this is my LAN and the idea was to put one firewall here, one firewall here or maybe multiple firewall and this is your modem. But these days, do you think this kind of attack type, uh, this type of security is enough? We all, I can guess, it's not. Why? Because these days we have port 80 open and we know that there are many attack patterns which is used in port 80. So uh, sometimes having firewall, sometimes having antivirus is not good enough. Why? Because they use zero day attacks which the antivirus or your firewall is not aware. Then what you need to do is you need to check the behavior. You need to have something which can understand if something's going wrong and that something is the IDS or IPS. What is the concept? It has the IDS has six different concepts. One is the architecture. Two is your monitoring strategy. Three is analysis type. Four is timing. Five is goals of institution detection and control issues. So why is the architect important? Because if you place this IDS, IPS in the wrong side, then it's not good. If, even if you place it in the right place and you don't monitor it good, it's still not good. You should also include the right analysis type. Let's say you don't allow any UDP connection into your network and you monitor UDP only. Is this good? So, if you open a port, any kind of port, this includes port 80, port 25, port 110, port 64,312, just make the port number up, then you should also create an analysis time 
to monitor this part as well. And you should have some goals. Goals of protect your network. How? While looking the attack patterns. While controlling any possible issues. So, when it comes to architecture, you have two primary components. One is the host target co-location and two is the host target separation. The host target co-location usually protects the systems that are running under their control. So, this is a bit easy. Why? Everything is connected to them and it's under their control. When you get the host target, you have to separate your IDS host machine from the target system, which will improve your security of your IDS, but it will it might add some complexity. So myself, I am certified on um, Palo Alto on uh, Astaro software devices. Uh, I'm a certified trainer. I was certified uh, for some couple of uh, software firewalls as well, such as Microsoft TMG, which is not available anymore. I am in the advi advisor board of McAfee security products. I am usually in a close connection with Kaspersky products as well, but looking at all these different companies, all these vendors, they have all different ways to identify their security issues. From, f with, for, as an instructor who works with all these companies, I noticed the most important thing of the, not just IDS concept, of the whole security is monitoring strategies. What is monitoring? The term monitoring refers to an action of gathering data from a data source and passing it to analysis engine. Just think about uh, if you went to United States of America very recently, what they, or even in Australia, if you just went to uh, overseas and came back, which I do nearly twice a month, they put always as you know the the hall is always small when you first get out from the plane, and if you notice carefully, people are monitoring you. We got some people you can easily see their police or uh, AFPs. Then they got some cameras which they watch us. The idea is, if they see you suspicious, to you know, early, earlier block. So this is a physical security. It's not different when it's come to computer security environment as well. How is it not different? When it's come to IDS monitoring, they got. I mean, uh, IDS has four different monitoring strategies. First of first one is the host-based monitor, which gets all the data from sources internally to a system normally at the operating system level. So it's all uh, monitored, chained to each other. It's a bit easier to manage, easier to get information, but it has some disadvantages such as if something gets wrong to the operating system, then your host-based monitor is going to be wrong as well. Then we got the network-based monitor, which collects the data from network packets which is done by using different network devices that are set to promiscuous mode. I, I don't know if you remember, uh, I was talking about sniffing a couple of weeks ago and we said there are different modes, so let me just take a note here. I just remembered to do a can and able, uh, can and able demo, which promise I'm going to do one. I'm going to show you how sniffing happens and during that demo, which I'm going to record later offline, you will see that I'm going to start scanning the network in different modes. And then I will try to bypass some security patterns via a software, via, uh, via Shark maybe, or uh, via some uh, hardware as well, which I'm going to talk later about it. So I leave this for later. We've got limited time. I don't want to speak too much about it. Then we have the application-based monitor, which gathers all the data from the application as the name states. Then we got a target-based monitor, which you place into your target and uh, you monitor this as it creates its own data uh, and which you collect. Uh, what? I'm just quickly looking at the questions. 
why do we need IDS IPS? Can UTM will do the same? Yes, UTM is usually all in one device. A Snort, Snort is a really good software uh, where you can. I'm going to talk later about this. And when you at, at the moment, I didn't enable you to download. As soon as I finish the class, I'm going to let you download the full slide deck. Okay, where you can see that Snort is also covered in some details. And later, which I already recorded. I have some uh, some snort rules to by trying to bypass the firewall. So I got a demonstration for you, which I'm going to ask you to go and download it right after this. Okay? So this the this lecture is theory based, but I already got a firewall demonstration for you to download. So all what I have to do is after this upload the upload it to YouTube. Probably tomorrow you can just download it and watch it, and you will see that how I'm going to use Snort or uh, some other technologies to bypass find firewalls, bypass firewalls. Okay, uh, let's talk about the theory again, and I will come to the questions later as well. Okay, the ideas concept is usually analyzing the data. We're using the analysis to evaluate the data from symptoms of attack. It is exactly when you wake up one day, you know, was you, let's assume you got a ha uh, headache. How do you know you got a headache? Because when you, you have uh, some sort of pain in your head, which is, uh, which is getting all your power off. So you want to do something, but you can't because you feel sick. So basically, you feel the patterns. Or how do you know if a three months baby is hungry? They cry. How do you know your girlfriend uh, wants attention? You know, they, or your boyfriend wants attention. You know, they try to take your attention. You know, they try to speak to you. This and that. So there are different uh, symptoms to take our awareness. One of them is when it comes to IDS is the misuse detection. It will try to concentrate on activities that match explicit patterns of misissue. To be able to make this successful, we should have the right patterns uh, installed. So here's the question. Let's say you got an IPS, which is uh, just one hour out of date. And right in that one hour, a new attack was uh, developed and launched. Can your IPS do something? As this misissue is looking just for match, probably it's not going to be good enough. So, you need something else, an anomaly detection. What is that? that this will try to uh, look in the abnormal behavior of a system, which can be categorized as, hey, this is not normal. How do you know you got headache? Hey, this is not normal. Normally when I wake up, I feel, okay, a bit lazy, but uh, usually I don't have any pain in my head. How do you know the baby is hungry? Hey, usually the baby doesn't cry. You know what I mean? There is something not usual. And that's what we call ab anomaly detection. Will this webinars be available when we do exam? Yes, George. I just took a question. Oh, James answered it. Perfect. Sorry, I forgot about you, James. So what are the goals of IDSs again? First of all, IDSs have one main goal, which is to identify abnormal behavior of your network or a misuse of resources. How can uh, IDS do that? Well, two specific goals. One, accountability. Two, response. So, if IDSs can count it, if there is a link or activity which is connected into it and which has a responsible of initiation it, then it can be done. The second is the response, which is the activity that used to recognize the capability of an attack and take action to block that attack. So usually you got uh, two megabyte traffic in a busy hour. But now it is not just double, it's around 10 meg. And usually your attack pattern, uh, so your connection pattern is 
2 megabyte max, but this time you go 10 megabyte max. Hmm, the IP is going to say, there must be something wrong and it will, it will basically uh, notify the administrator via the, via the method they set up. Okay, which IDS is the correct one for your organization? When you select an IDS, you should consider the privacy level first. Of course, the price is important, but uh, sometimes cheap ideas maybe do something better than an expensive one. Or a cheaper one is less targeted as the higher one uh, usually is managed by bigger companies, uh, sorry, it's been implemented by bigger companies where hackers aim more. So you should look into these variations. Do you need hardware one or software one? Do you need all in one? When it's come to deployment, there are other questions to consider. First of all, you're going to think about your critical assessed. So you should configure your IDS right with the policies and procedures so you can protect the assessed. Uh, of course, the important thing here is you should be able also to store evidence for any kind of misbehaviors. It could be an internal guy who is trying to send some confidential data, some classified data out. This can be also detected by uh, IDS. And another important thing is maintaining the IDS. To do that, you should be able to define the responses. You should be able to uh, see the alert and have some sort of A, automatic B manual way to analyze the key alert and the outcome to protect any possible attack patterns. Okay, what are the characteristics of an IDS? An IDS usually runs constantly without human supervision. Otherwise, you should, ha you should uh, hire that guy in the beginning, I don't know if you remember, and they will always look around. Think about nightclubs. They got security prof uh, sorry, they got security guards. They always walk around and look uh, a bit strange to people. Hmm, what are you doing? You know, it's their job. This is exactly what an IDS does. It will not walk around, but it will look into the packets. It will officially uh, think about an airport again. When you have your luggage, you know we have to put our luggages into the screening machine where the guy is basically looking inside your luggage to see if you got any anything bad such as bomb or knife or liquid more than 100 mil. If you do, then uh, if it's something not harmful, they take it out uh, and they don't let you in. If it's something harmful, probably they will arrest you. <laughs> so it's the same with IDS and IPSs. They will look into the uh, packets. The IDS will detect it. The IPS will try to prevent it. We will talk about IPSs shortly. Uh, when you start to look in the characteristics of an IDS, you should be also uh, easily. You should be able to easily adopt the system with the new technologies as well. It should be able, or it should be capable, to work with your current environment. Let's say you use all Windows environment and you buy a IDS which is Linux based, okay, no problem, but which only uh, looks in Linux behaviors. Is this good for you? No, I know it was a bad example, but uh, just an example which hopefully gives you an idea. Uh, James, do you have any questions that you yeah, can't no. answer? Yeah, we've got a few here, um, most of which I can't answer. Uh, what have we got? Uh, firstly, George is asking, what are we going to use the virtual lab for? A virtual lab? Okay, I, so if you build one already, so uh, to be honest, it's my fault. I didn't um, remember last week I asked you to download Knable, but I didn't record a demo. I totally skipped that. I forgot about it, so I'm, I'm going to show you how you can use these kinds of software, okay? And what you can do is, you can download Metasploit, so uh, maybe 
I will do also another demo for Metasploit as well. This is in the to-do list. And I want you to try to some vulnerabilities in your on your environment, okay? So basically, uh, this week I it's it's been recorded. Half of it's been recorded, to be honest. Uh, I got a demo environment where I got some patch machine and unpatch machines, and I'm gonna show you how you can analyze these kinds of machines, okay? And uh, to be honest, you're just gonna watch me, but do nothing. Uh, as soon as you watch it, I want you to practice the same thing. Okay, so um, probably uh, James, uh, maybe maybe uh, we can just not in the forms. I can just put the software names. I think I did it already put it. I said please make sure you download. I remember first week we had around 13, 14 software, yep. which is in the slide deck. You can download these ones, and uh, I want you to install them and use them. What I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna record some some uh, demos with this specific software to give you ideas how you can use it in your demo environment. Okay? Cool. Thanks, Erdal. Uh, another question from Jeff is, could you please describe the properties of a next generation firewall? Is this a combination of a normal firewall and an IPS slash IDS? We will talk about firewalls uh, in very soon, okay? Can I answer this question when we come to firewalls? Keep in mind, a firewall is not an IPS, or IPS is not a firewall. Yes, you might have a UTM, which is all in one. But at the moment, uh, we are not... Let me answer this question a little bit later. If I forgot, please remind me. Yep, uh, thanks, Adol. Uh, there's a couple more that we'll leave till the end, because they're probably okay. out of sync where, of where we're up to now. Uh, Niaz, I saw your question. What are some types of ideas or pieces? We, you're going to see this very shortly in the slide deck. Okay. What are the importance of IDS? First of all, to create some security functions. So it should have a good database. It should be able to identify some attacks. It should be able to deal with large amount of data. Right? The pipe and the pipe should be good on it. It should be able to process building forensic and reporting capabilities. Why? Even if you get hacked, which is possible, you should be able to, if necessary, trace it back. It should be able to provide system administrator the ability to calculate attacks. So it should be able to have a false positive uh, accountability as well. Uh, it should be also be able to identify if it's an external or an internal attack, or maybe both. Also, it is recommended that your IDS should offer centralized management for connection of distributed attacks. Now, more and more distributed attacks are coming true. We know Anonymous is doing that. So how can you deal with all this, all kinds of attacks? Look, many, many years ago, if you had an attack, you just could, let's say the attack is from China, you could just block the whole IP range. Is this today that useful? Really? Of course not. They can use proxies, they can use tolls, they, they can use zombies to attack you from any country. We know that governments hiring hackers. Yes, we have cyber armies. They they get paid to attack at other countries. We know that some countries they they use their security professionals or hackers. I don't know what you want to call them to listen to other countries. So your ideas, IPS, should be able to do something against those. So, how can we identify the importance of an IDS? Oh, do I got... Yeah, twice, the same slide twice. Bravo to me. Uh, understanding the types of IDSs. There is a network-based IDS, which we call NITS. There is a host-based IDS. Niaz, this is answering your question. Uh, Distributed-based IDS and protocol IDSs. What is the NIDS? NIDS will monitor the TCP IP packets on the network. I hope you... Okay, uh, I usually ask this in my introduction qu question. Uh, how many protocols are there on TCP IP? Can you quickly type it down? Just numbers. 1, 2, 5, 10, 50, 1000. Can you please type it into your chat box? 65,010. This is a port number. 
No, 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 not 65,000 supports. Don't mix it up. I'm asking how many protocols, like transmission control protocol slash IP protocol. Is it two protocols? Seven is the OSL. Thousand, oh my God. Thousands, millions, zillions. Two. Okay, uh, yeah, there. Look, we can classify it as 25. Okay, 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 enough. Mm, beautiful, Bruce. I think you got the best answer. TCP, UTP, ICMP, IGMP. SMTP, yes, uh, IP is actually four layers, not 4J. Uh, OSI is seven layers. Okay, okay, okay. It's just a quick test. Uh, there is 25 big protocols, actually, as, as uh, Bruce, I think, said, and he's smiling. Uh, TCP, UDP, ICMP, IGMP, and all those, okay? If you forgot all this, remember, I gave you a couple of websites to go through very quickly again. Uh, what was it? I forgot as well. Tactionary. Tactionary.com. Please make sure Tactionary, like Dictionary, but Tactionary. This is a beautiful website which has all this information for you and, and has a flash database. So if there is anything which you don't understand, please make sure, it's just a bit slow at the moment, please make sure you go and visit this website. Let's say a TCP IP with click and T. Scroll down or just TCP TCP IP packets and ports. And this will explain it to you beautifully, okay? So it has really, really good as you can see, layer one, layer two, layer two, it goes up to seven layers. You can just Click and read through and uh, understand how it works. So, this is a just quick reminder. Back to my slide deck. IPS uses. Uh, looks like slide not moving. Does everybody have the same issue? Can you see no, my no, slides no, moving the at the moment? Yes. Fine. Okay, beautiful. So, check your internet connection. Uh, back to. My side tag, we have also a network-based IDS, which we call NID. Ah, that's what I was talking about, sorry. Uh, the advantages of NID, it can detect large scale of instruction, and it can provide response and notification automatically. But it has, as everything else, a disadvantage. And the only disadvantage is they require high network bandwidth. So that's why usually NITs are used by uh, the, uh, if you have direct connection to the internet, so if you're not using an I, uh, ISP, then probably you have a NIT-based uh, IDS in your network. The NIT architecture is, as you see, you got a corporate network, you got your, you know, internal network and the untrusted networks. You put your NIT sensors in between, so you can uh, sense any kinds of bad traffic. What are the sensors? The sensors are basically some sort of engine which will help you to recognize network packets. And uh, I, I use the example K-enable a few times. K-enable has actually, it's not just a usual sniffer, such as Wireshark, with K-enable, which I'm pretty sure if you're into security, you know it's a very basic but very good software. Please watch the recording, the demo recording about uh, Kenable. Uh, you will see that you can also poison network. Yes, you can poison any kind of uh, computer in your own network, for example, and you can start to sniff their activities. Uh, if you don't have an IPS and IDS, then it's really hard to get detected. But if you have a niche base um, IPS IDS, then you will be able to detect this activity. That's why I always recommend my students in my hacking classes, never ever ever do a scanning or a, a sniffing activities without uh, without your knowledge's knowledge, your manager's knowledge, unless your manager, you know, is not allowed to know, and you're doing a black pass, black pass, uh, black box attack. 
So uh, if you have an IPS, you will be detected straight away, assuming the uh, IPS is good. So there is two types of NITS-based ash detector. One is a traditional sensor-based ash detector, where you place the sensors in the network, uh, in the firewall, and before firewall. So if you look at my screenshot here, you notice this is my firewall, and my sensors is in the you know before and after the firewall, just in case it passes through. Then we have the distributed network node architecture, where you place it uh, in ran randomly in the network. What is a traditional sensor-based architecture? This system consists of sensor placed through the network to monitor all the segments of the network. So it has a network, let's say TCP/IP. You know, all good. It goes through the detection engine. So the detection engine is gonna look in each and every packet. Uh, last week, my wife told me she was apparently watching. Um, I forgot the name. I will quickly ask her shortly. Uh, there is a TV show in Australia. I know we got many people which is not from Australia, which shows the customs, and they scan random luggages, they scan random uh, containers. And the aim is to find either drugs or you know anything which is coming illegal to Australia. What ha what, what happened is they they can't just scan everything, right? Can you imagine Australia customs? It's huge, but with network we can't just do samples. If you look in a old method IPS's IDS's firewalls, they used to also not scan everything as everything was limited. But these days. Everything has been detected. Uh, sorry, everything goes through the detection engine, and the detection engine will keep a log of everything. So you can go back, even if it missed something, you can go and see what's going on. If the detection engine detects something, it will create an alert, and it will send an alert straight to security officer. What is if it's 3 a.m. in the morning and the security officer is sleeping? Also to the response system. Then the database it will keep a track for the reports as well as a track for data forensics. So why data forensics? Data forensics will help you a to recover if necessary, b to f help you to find the source of the attack. In a distributed node, we have our network sensors and we got our command console. The idea is same. We got the network packets, which comes into the detection engine. Again, if it detects something, it goes to security officer. If not, it will go to the local response. It creates an alert. If you compare both of them, you will see that the traditional sensor-based is a bit more detailed, but the distributed network node will consist an agent which is placed on each computer in the network to control the traffic. But you should be able, you know, you, you have to install this agent in every computer. If you think a network such as Fujitsu, I know they got more than 65,000 computers in one specific location. If they're going to install 65,000 traditional nodes, then antivirus, then this, then this, this can be a lot. So uh, you have to decide what kind of uh, IDS, IPS detection uh, method you're going to install. Erdal, where is the can enable demo? Erdal says to watch. Uh, I didn't upload it yet, Andrew. I'm going to upload it shortly, OK? Yes, uh, I didn't upload it yet. No problem. Network-based detection. In a network-based detection, network-based attacks are dealt before they even uh, go to the operating system. Why? Because if you think about the OSR layer, it will be in the data link and network layer. So if there is an OS vulnerability, it will not even go up there. Uh, the idea of network-based detection is usually to detect unauthorized access, data resource theft, DOS attack, password download, malformed packets, 
packet flooding. So, uh, the idea is again to access any kind of network attempt which is out of the security policy. Hmm, why is this guy trying to dump uh, the security password uh, file, which is, I forgot the name just for a second, which is the password, Windows password dump file? Hmm, why is this computer uh, trying to get access on a VLAN which is not allowed to connect? Hmm, why there are uh, too many unauthorized access from this specific IP address? So, this is, uh, this is just a couple of methods. Like the password download, it's simple but effective. What people can do is, they can just download the file that contains an unauthorized password and what's going to happen is, uh, the IDS can just see that and block it. Same applies to malformed packets. If you think a couple of years ago, uh, the hack is fine, a beautiful method. They create an attack, which we, not, which we actually, it's not covered in this course, but it's part of CH class, the Certified Ethical Hacking class. Uh, I, I'm showing you there how you can build viruses in a fragmented way. So you're going to send packets, uh, you're going to build a virus and attack, but you're not going to send it as one packet, you're going to send it fragmented. And as soon as it bypasses your firewall, it's going to combine and launch the attack. But the firewalls went smarter as the hackers find these kinds of attacks. They now detect each and every packet, like Palo Alto, for example. I told you that I'm a Palo Alto certified instructor. I think I'm the only one in Australia, or I was till very recent. I was the only certified Palo Alto instructor. And Palo Alto has a really good detection method when it comes to uh, fragmented attacks. Why? They get every suspicious packet, analyze it in a sandbox environment, they basically extract the packet, check the behavior, and then uh, uh, build it back and send it to the destination. I know Sophos has something similar. So I'm going to record a demo, uh, which is a software based. Remember I was talking first week threat analyzer? So this week you're going to watch the demo by Threat Analyzer. So I'm going to get a virus. I'm going to infect a computer with that virus and you're going to see what the virus is doing in the background. How? Why the Threat Analyzer software? It will basically log everything. Restart the computer for me and give me a report. So please, I didn't record this. I didn't record yet that demonstration, but please watch it. It's very interesting. That's, uh, it's, uh, this is also going to show you why it's important to use sandboxes. So we're going to talk about that during our offline demo. What is the packet flooding? This is basically a dust attack technique. So they flood lots of traffic. Uh, let's say, uh, let me just get the name. Bruce, he's the last one who asked me a question. Bruce, uh, Bruce is walking in the street. Nobody's around. And I'm hiding behind a tree and Scheming. Bruce, are you there? Bruce, are you there? Yes, beautiful. But you look behind, you don't see anybody. What will you do, Bruce? He's just typing, so. Panic, why? <laughs> you shouldn't panic. Okay, what will you do? You will look around. Hey, there, I hear someone is calling my name. If not, you will continue walking, right? Uh, I do it again. Bruce, are you there? You will look behind. After a few times, you will get angry. Hey, you beep. You know, beep. I beeped it out. I have to be professional. Uh, beep. Where are you? You will continue walking. So, what happened is, you lost around 30 seconds of your time stopping looking around. There is an attack method, very similar to this, which we call sync attack. What is sync? Uh, I'm pretty sure you all know what a three-way handshake protocol is. Okay? If you don't know what the three-way handshake protocol is, please go to Dictionary and just read and learn about it. It is like, uh, let's say, I come into a room, I see, I see Dominic. Hi, I said, yes, thank you, Dominic, it's Sam file. Yeah, I, you just wanted me. Uh, hi, Dominic. It, uh, 
I go to Dominic say, hi Dominic said, ah, hi Earl, how are you? And we shake hands. But what is if I go and say to Bruce, hi Dominic, he's going to say, oh no, it's not me, sorry, I'm not Dominic. Oh, I'm going to say, sorry. So there is, I'm sending a sync packet saying, Dominic, if it's Dominic, he is going to send me an acknowledge packet, an ACK packet back, said, yes, I'm Dominic. Then I'm going to send him a sync packet as well saying, hi, nice to meet you, Earl. But if I do the same thing to, yes, Jakob. If I do the same thing to Jakob, for example, hi, Dominic, Jakob is going to say, no, sorry, he's going to send a fin packet, finish packet, and continue walking. Now, how is the flooding happening? In a computer, every time uh, there is a sync packet coming in, the computer is going to wait for around 70 mil 75 milliseconds, OK? Can you imagine thousands of sync packet comes in because the computer has to send acknowledge packet, right? If I send thousands of pa sync packets and the computer is going to wait 75 minutes, 75 minutes, thousands times 75 minutes, what's going to happen? I think you all know what's going to happen. So we should have a proper IDS in place which can detect this as well. Okay, Roberto, this is a really good question actually. Does an IDS MBD device detect crypto locker? Depends on the depends on the IBS uh, depends on the hardware vendor to be honest. Uh, these days a modern and up to date one should be able to detect that. I will come to the questions a bit later. Uh, I promise to finish today around eight thirty. Let me just catch up with the slides, okay? Host-based IDS, what is that? Basically, it's going to monitor the data on the system. It will collect and analyze the data in an aggregating way. So, it can only be analyzed locally or sent to a separate central analysis system. The advantages of HIDS is, basically, it will detect broad range of detection and it has uh, support for large lo large threats. There is no requirement of dedicated hardware. <coughs> Excuse me. And the maintenance is difficult to the distributed agents. That's a disadvantage. Why? Because you have many distributed agents. But it is really good in terms of up use of privileges attack. And it, it is really good on accessing the critical data that runs in a website, database, proposal information, and so on. So it has good uh, critical data and modification methods. And it, uh, in, in terms of uh, changing the security configuration, it, it will be able to detect any kind of action why it is installed locally. Now, just uh, I can see there are many, many questions on I, uh, network based IDS versus host based IDS. And promise I'm going to ask you a question on week five based on this. So if you're listening to this later offline, please make sure you read this slide well because promise I'm going to ask a question from this specific slide, okay? Network based IDS uses information obtained from a system usually a single host, where a host-based uses information gained from a total section of network. Well, don't get confused. Host-based is getting from a total section of the network, where a network-based, it is getting from single host. Network-based is more adaptable with version of system, where host-based is less adaptable. Network-based is complex, requires uh, sorry, it's easy. It requires less training where host base is complex, which requires training. Network based IDSs scans local machine registry where host base uses LAN bandwidth. Network based IDS is better for detecting inbound attacks where host base is better for detecting outbound attacks. That's why people uh, buy these days all at once or they place an I need and hid in different computers, but they uh, controlled from one location. And this is the 
ideal scenario, if you ask me. Hey, Erda, we've got a few questions just asking if that's the right way around uh, of the headings there. Um, is host based, just to clarify, is host based uh, where the software is in installed on a host uh, or is that yeah. network based? Yeah. So, unless, uh, unless EC Council put the wrong in. Yes, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. All right, cool. Uh, um, hold on, I'm just thinking. Yeah. So and how, also, how does a network also, based IDS scan uh, local machine registry? It's one of the questions. Uh, you will see it very shortly. Cool. Thanks. We will talk here. Network behavior analysis, and it has also a, a probably I disabled, I removed it from the slide deck, but it it has some mechanisms. Okay, so uh, like network network. No, this one. Sorry, we were here. It has some mechanisms and sensors which is uh, connected to different databases, which uh, which works with different uh, like antivirus database. Uh, hits database so it collects all this information and looks into specific packets to define I'm sorry better now new headset thank you to James he just sent me a new headset uh, so I just press the button while I'm moving around yeah so so it has some mechanisms what I can do is uh, I don't have a to be honest I don't have a good I, yes, which I can demonstrate. I got a Sophos firewall installed in my home system, which I can show you. Tony, Tony, are you there? Tony, actually, he's a Sophos expert. Uh, yes, you know what we can do with Tony? What we we can just uh, use sounds incorrect, Jacob. I will double check this for you as well. Uh, this week we're gonna record something with Tony for you, okay? Just to prove that I'm right. Just wait a demo. Uh, Tony, what we're going to do is together, let's, I'm going to launch an attack against the Sophos device that you gave me, which is uh, connected here. And I'm going to show you how it works, OK? Uh, I'm going to show you. Please watch a recording, which I'm going to do a demo for you during this week. Please don't expect it early, this, not expect it early next week, as I got some exams uh, Monday, OK? Uh, as soon as the exam is over, promise I'm gonna get a couple of extra, which is not part of this course, couple of extra demonstrations for you to give you an idea. I can't do many different products as I don't have too much access to all these products, but just to give you an idea, I'm gonna demonstrate it with a specific product with Palo Alto. I got access to Palo Alto and Sophos, okay? So you can look into Palo Alto and Sophos and uh, get idea of the other devices. And I have a mail cut over this week. Sorry. Sorry, Tony, I couldn't catch up. I'm gonna look I'm gonna look into it. Later. Let me just catch up. Okay, what is an MBA? MBA is a network behavior analysis. Basically, as I said, the 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 census will look into the network and it will try to see if there is an unusual traffic flow, such as DDS malware behavior and uh, based on the policies, based on the setup, it will try to control and keep your network safe. It has a couple of disadvantages. Usually network behavior analysis is hardware software or expensive. And it is complicated. I'm just looking for Daryl. Daryl, I'm going to promise I'm going to just uh, at the moment I can't concentrate on two things. Let me just finish this and promise I'm going to double check everything for you one more time, all right? So I'm taking all these questions offline. Jacob, Jacob, Daryl, and promise I'm going to triple check for you. Not double, triple check from different resources, okay? I'm going to open my SIS and my other EC Council and even SANS materials for you double check. I might be wrong. I'm a human. If I'm wrong, I'm going to do a recording straight away, saying this is the correct thing. If not, basically, I'm not going to post anything. Deal? Daryl, Jacob, deal? I assume you say yes. Cool. 
Perfect. What is true false? Now, think about your home alarm or your work, your work alarm. Let's say you are the responsible person. 3 a.m. your phone rings. It says, hey, you know what? Your alarm is on. What will you do? Uh, if you are the responsible person, you have to drive there and double check. You go there, you look, hey, there is nothing. False alarm. You drive back, you go back to sleep. Uh, five minutes later, the alarm goes on again. You said, you know what? There might be something. You might drive back. I'm not saying you will. You might drive back. You look at it. Hmm, nothing there. I bet third time you will not. Uh, you come back home. You go back to sleep. It's now 6:30 a.m. The alarm goes on again. It's Saturday, not during the week. You will probably ignore it. Why? Because it was a false alarm. But this time, uh, what hackers done is they actually activated the attack three times, so to take you off. There are different attack types like this as well, which we, which. Uh, which we call true false positive attack. So they send the false attacks. The second you start to ignore it, they will send the actual attack. So what is this true false or positive negative alarms? True positive is an alarm which generate and present a condition uh, which says, you know what? There is an alarm. Yes, it's true, and it's positive. True negative is basically an alarm is generated, a present condition should be alarmed. False positive is an alarm was not generated, there is no condition present to warrant the alarm, so basically it's wrong and it's not even a virus, who cares, just ignore. False negative is an alarm was not generated and a presented condition should be alarmed. Basically, the third attack, remember? I said first two times you went there, there was nothing. Third time, it's a false negative alarm. So even you, the alarm was not generated because you turned it off. So alarm was not generated, and the condition is real. So not generated alarm, but present the condition. Current slide is confusing. True alarm, false alarm. Uh, Dave's um, that's just definition. Definitions. I, I don't know how I can explain it to you differently. F5 at the perimeter and make a few on the host hole. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah the, they look a little funny to me too. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll put up the proper definitions on the on the site tomorrow. We'll, we'll get them re okay. in, in English. Okay, um, I get... Uh, this is uh, yeah, EC Kang in this look. I didn't. I, to be honest, I knew that you were going to... Uh, that's why I left the uh, copyright by EC Kang. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, okay, uh, you or me, James, okay? One of us, uh, let's put it in the forms, okay? Yep. I'll put uh, it up. Don't rely on... Don't rely on... Um, I forgot the name again. Oh, my God. Wikipedia, okay? Because I know Wikipedia doesn't have everything. It's a bit confusing on this as well. So, uh, okay, don't just put the Wikipedia definition there. Okay? Just uh, if you put it. So, let's, let's work on it. Switch the last two. <laughs> okay, Bruce, for you, we can do that. Okay, what is an IPS? Intrusion Prevention System. Intrusion Prevention System can be any device that uses access control to guard system from misuse of attacks. Okay, what is this? Basically, it is a device that has lots of access control for securing your environment from app use. You use a uh, different function to output, uh, you know. Now, you remember the IDS? It did detect what was wrong, but it didn't prevent anything. So, it is like your home alarm. Someone breaks in, it just generates sound, but it doesn't do anything else. You know, it will try to annoy the guy who's coming in. It will try to scare the guys coming in, but it won't do anything. Let's think um, you generate a electric, a electric shock. As soon as someone touches your, let's say the alarm goes on, 
and someone is trying to touch your safe and you remotely start to start the electroshock. Just the guy gets just electroshock. Uh, you know, I know not such a system existing, but IPS is something like that. Okay, basically it it will. Let's say if an, uh, let's say the idea is to detect a virus, the IPS will just use the core to that virus, and this slide will explain you exactly what it is. I hope it's in clear English for you. Uh, again, EC cancer slide. IDS is placed on a network inactively, where an IPS is inline active. IDS cannot pass encrypted traffic, where IPS is bad at defending applications. IDS has install is installed on the network segments as a NITs or in HOT as a HITS. It is the same with IPSs. IDS will become reactive by providing alerts, where IPS becomes proactive by blocking. Remember, electroshock in my safe, and then someone trying to touch my safe if there is if the alarm is on. So it's coming proactive. IDS is ideal for identifying hacking attacks. IPS is ideal for blocking this kind of destructions. Okay? Uh, this was better than the other slide, I do agree. Okay, what is the checklist for intruder detection? Step one, check the logs. It's always the case. If you buy a second-hand car, you will usually check the logs. Um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a friend with a girl, you will check her, or with a boy, you will check her, or his Facebook account. Mm, ooh, let me check the history, you know. So, check the logs. Number two, look for set setup IDs, uh, set user IDs, or set uh, generated IDs files. Check the system binaries. Check the packet sniffers. Uh, examine files by running con or at. So it's like a. I don't have any demo for you at Wireshark, but uh, you can just use some search mechanisms. Uh, you should examine if like the etc pass pass wd files. You should check the system, the network configuration. You should look everywhere for unusual or hidden files such as such as um, rootkits. You should examine all machines on the local network, especially on critical machines, okay? So, as a summary, James Anderson is the guy who wrote the IDS. Network-based IDS is used to monitor TCP IP packets in network. Host-based IDS is used to monitor the data that initiates on systems. Implementation of IDS is affected by the ability to confirm a system for its environment-specific requirement. SNORT is a open source software. I think um, there is a free version and a paid version as well, which can help you to use different different what different uh, packet sniffing and works as logger. And I know many commercial firewall brands or IDS IPS brands using Snort for rule check for creating rules. And there are different uh, formats for managing different sensors. Okay, let me. Any questions? Melissa's question here. For example, we're given download links for another. Uh, Erdal, I've, I've got a, uh, yeah. a statement from from David saying, look everywhere for unusual or hidden files. That's got to be tough. Now, I, I don't remember the, the term for it, but there's a there's a good tool you can use, or a lot of good tools. I think it's called, is it baseline monitoring, or where you can get it before? Uh, yeah, yeah, the NDA, for example. We talked about the Max of Baseline Analyzer, okay, which, will, which is the free one. Remember a couple of weeks ago? 
we have some software where we'll look, which will do this for you. You don't have to do that. That's your usually your uh, your antivirus's job. Okay. So look, this guys, I'm just doing testing for this at the moment. Semana, what it does, it works with a couple of different antivirus databases. Okay, and it will look into all hidden files for you. I'm not going to do that manually. The software is doing this for me. And usually when you buy a package like a UTM, this will be all in one anyway the, in the control center, but you have different uh, uh, different uh, machines, different software which will do this for you. Okay, so as you can see, it is, you know, looking to every files and it will try to identify if everything is wrong. And as I said, the threat analyzer software, please watch the demo which I am about. So threat analyzer, it's really, really good software for you. Um, where threat analyzer, I spelled it wrong, I know that. Uh, let me just give me one second. Here you go, trackattacksecurity.com. This is seriously my favorite software, uh, which I use. What it has, it has an antivirus and mobile analysis and threat intelligence all in one. It will look. To be honest, I don't use the Viper antivirus, okay? But the threat analyzer here. So please watch the demo. You're gonna see how I analyze. So it it is working like an IPS, IDS, okay? Which basically analyzes the behavior of the that's the software, which has a d dynamic malware anal analysis system for you via sandbox. So please, I'm gonna record this demo for you, and you can watch it, okay? Uh, or if if you don't want to wait for me, you can just request a demo for me as well. But uh, I I didn't record it yet. But I, I you know I use every every couple of weeks I check my machine via the software to see if something's going wrong or not. So there are many tools which will help you to do that. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I'll just read out one more for now, and we'll get to any others at the end. Um, it's obviously a very subjective question, uh, but maybe you can shed some light on to what's better out of host-based or network-based IDS, or for instance, when would you use one over the other? Uh, if you look here, okay, this is actually the answer of that. Uh, to be honest, if possible, use both of it. But, and again, to be honest, you will have these days IDS and IPSs as one. I don't know which brand uh, you're using, but if you have a Cisco or a, I know F5 is going into it now as well. If you have uh, if you have you know a brand, usually they have both of them in one. Uh, can you please copy and paste that chat notes to include document available for download? Yes, okay, no problem. So I prefer IDS and IPS. Uh, IDS without RPS is not good. Why? It will detect but do nothing. So is this good? No. It's like alarm in your home. Yeah? You know someone in the house. You are like let's say I'm in Germany in holiday, okay, to see my family. I know my my phone is ringing. I see okay, it's an alarm. Oh. So what can I do? Nothing. As IPS, what I do is I put host monitoring, basically the phone rings also in the police station or in a security guard, which I send the security guard. Yes, I know it costs extra, but I say IDS is not good with IP, without IPS. IPS can't do anything if it doesn't detect uh, the attack. Does it make sense? Yeah, works for me. Okay, he said thanks as well. Is a good free IPS? Uh, yes, there is a couple of free firewalls as well. 
Tony Tony Hodge is the, he is here. Uh, is still a starter free for internal uh, for Sophos? Is it still free for home usage? Yes, free for home. Uh, beautiful. As Robert said, you can use Astor or Sophos. You can use up to 10 IP addresses free. So Sophos.com or uh, what's the Sophos.com? Yes, you can just uh, basically download. I will put them in the form where you can just download. What you can do is you can just get a virtual machine, okay? And you can just direct all your modern network to that virtual machine, which is basically going to work as a firewall for you, okay? As IPS ideas for you. Uh, maybe Tony. Okay, what we what we can do is with Tony during the week. I know him very well. Uh, he's an expert uh, at Sophos products. Okay, we will do a demo together, and I will show you how you can um, download and install that. Okay. Sophos.com, beautiful. He he already put it there. Uh, can I copy from here? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, James, uh, you got it. Beautiful. James got it for you. He will just uh, copy and put it uh, to you. Actually, Robert put it, not not Tony. Doesn't matter. It's all good. Ah, oh, yeah, it's here. I can copy it as well. No, I can't. I don't know how to do it. Okay, I leave it to James. Any other questions? Uh, not just for now. Um, any others will do it at the end. How's the class going? Good? Everybody happy? Beautiful. No dropouts, which means good to me. Beautiful. Buneo. Thank you, James. <laughs> James Roger, not James James. Okay. What is a firewall? Okay. Um, I explain our firewall as, hey, guys, can you, did you ever cook spaghetti or noodles. I normally watch the recordings and decide to join online, but I just woke up. Yeah, one. what time is it there? Ah, oh, beautiful. That's me enjoying it. Yeah, there are many firewalls. We're going to put the links for you. To be honest, during, at the moment, I'm so concentrated. There are so many, probably as soon as I stop the recording, I will remember a few names for you. Uh, if not, I can. Please watch my Google did, how many people did watch the Google hacking demo? Google hacking demo? So basically that's how you find your stuff. Andrew J, I'm not surprised that you watch it. You're one of the good students. Oh, okay, Nigeria, 10, 14 a.m. Beautiful, Ted, beautiful. So most of the people watch it. So just use the terms and try to find it yourself. You know, I showed you how to catch the fish. Ted, yeah, you saw it in CH, beautiful. Probably you don't see it six, right? That's last time when it was covered in CH. CH seven eight doesn't cover it anymore. Seven? Good. Uh, I know it's CH seven doesn't have uh, I maybe uh, no, I don't think so. It's in the book anymore. Uh ah, you were my student, Ted. Ah, okay, yeah, I usually cover that. So if you were my student, definitely I usually say guys, it's not in the book anymore, but it's good. So, Ted, I know you then from somewhere, from my class, right? Okay, cool. Hi, Ted, again, sorry. You know, it's hard to remember people. Okay, firewalls. Okay, Ted, you know, uh, Tony, you know, you attended my classes before. Uh, what, you, what you do is you cook the noodles inside, uh, you know, then you get the filter. You tell the filter, hey, filter, you know what? I don't want water. I want you to keep the noodles. So you set it up to filter the water out and keep the noodles in. Firewall is not different. And I'm going to record, actually it's, it's already in YouTube. Let me quickly open you the video. OK. Various of the net. That's the URL here. Please watch this video. All right. Let me stop it for you. This is a beautiful video, especially for new starters. Okay. 
it is a video which shows you how the internet works, how a fiber works, how SMTP traffic or how HTTP traffic happens, how collisions happens. So, as Ted says, there, it's an excellent video. Uh, it used to be free. It's not free anymore. So it's not free here. It's not free here, but uh, you know how to find it for free, okay? You know how to find it for free uh, and watch it. It is really excellent video. At the movie, actually, it's still free. I think. Yeah, you can go and watch it from here. As you can see. And you can see there, there got quite the traffic. So please watch this video. You will enjoy it. You will love it. If you advance, don't worry. There is nothing for you there. So firewall is a combination of a hardware and software, or just could be hardware or just could be software, which permits, denies, encrypt or proxy all the computer traffic between different domains. The idea of a firewall is to monitor the traffic and help it to access or block the information. Okay? It has lots of features and the most important feature is for me logging. And uh, if you're using like I got a Windows firewall for example uh, in my computer installed. Then I have a star via Tony Tony Hodge. H. Tony, you're going to give me a discount next time. Uh, Windows Firewall, even though I've got a f hardware firewall installed in my network, this, you know, many people doesn't like Windows Firewall, but to be honest, it's doing the job. Why? I can always go allow or block traffic. This is default. If I need to change settings, I can just uh, go to the apps and I can allow or disallow traffic. Okay, uh, this, there is two, there are really enough free firewall software for you available where you can go and download and uh, set it up. The job of the firewall is firewalls. I call it like look. I got a dog, beautiful little dog, Chihuahua. Okay, when I say sit down, it will sit down. I said run, it runs. So it only listens to your commands. When I when Tony comes to visit me for coffee. Uh, I know he likes Turkish coffee, okay? Uh, my dogs, you know, usually bark to Tony and he does not respond to Tony. Why? Because she does not, actually, my dog does not know Tony. Firewalls are like that. If you don't set it up correctly, if you don't update it correctly, then they are not good for you. The job of firewall is to log any unauthorized or authorized traffic to provide a virtual VPN network to another network. Basically, uh, for example, Tony set up a network to my ex-company, which has a branch office in the US. Uh, he set up a VPN to the internet. So we manage all the securities here from the head of, we used to manage all the security from the head office here in Sydney. It can authenticate the users who provide username and password. Let's say I want to go to Facebook, which is blocked during business hours. Hey, I'm the admin. I can always put a reason and connect to Facebook. Let's say an example. I know it's not a good example. Uh, firewall's main job is to filter content that is considered inappropriate, such as videos, such as uh, executive mail attachments. So this will help you to get protected. A firewall can help you to secure individual users who serves the email or is usually keen to open any kind of attachments. It can also help you to, to protect the primitive security in the network. So it will basically monitor all the traffic which is bypassing the, the, the modem and the computer. There are different firewall types, such as packet filters, proxy servers, authentication systems. Oh, no, sorry. 
authentication systems and NAT. So what they do is packed with a look in every packet. Proxy server will capture all the requests to real server and will try to examine uh, if it's a request made by a user or uh, if it's by the server. Why? If it's a MITM attack, man in the middle attack, then uh, maybe the firewall can permit that. It will try to authenticate the systems. It will basically determine if the user is based on the username and password. Is it from the is it coming from domain controller or is it from uh, someone else? It will do the NAT basically from outside. You're gonna look like you got one IP address, network address transition. Uh, from inside, you're gonna still have your IP addresses. So it has different different components. As we all know. Each hardware has a software inside. So, but when it comes to firewall, we got the hardware and software firewall. Software firewall is, as I just tried to show to you, the Windows firewall, for example, or AVG firewall, or Zone Alarm, or Symantec, or Kaspersky. There are many different firewalls, okay? Or Sophos. Then, there is also hardware firewall such as, as I said, Sophos again, such as um, uh, Cisco, such as, you know, the, well, the difference is it is a dedicated resource which, uh, which is placed in the perimeter of the network and it will basically filter the traffic based on the settings. To make firewall effective, you should establish rules and restrictions to your firewall. If you don't do that, your firewall is useless. I just read Melissa's message. Melissa, you're going to get all of it, promise. Uh, firewall configuration stages are, first of all, you buy the firewall. How, to, how can you choose the right firewall? Um, usually, the best way is to try them out. Look, I work at the moment for Chem Technologies. Chem Technologies is a load balancing company. What is this uh, camp doing? Basically, we give load balances. We sell load balances. We don't have any free product, but what we do offer is we offer a 30 day trial to all our software or hardware. So basically, you can just get our hardware firewall, okay? Sorry, uh, load balancer. Uh, ship, get a ship for you for free. You can test it for 30 days. And no question, if you don't like it, no question asked, you can just send back. Or if you like the virtual one, you can just download the virtual one. The idea of this is, we trust our product so much. So we know that as soon as you place it, as soon as you place it in, you will like it and buy it. Try, and I know not too many companies doing this in Australia. Try, before you buy a hardware, a software firewall, please make sure you get some sort of access to that. Uh, if you can get, place it in your network, get the support, try the support out, and see if they can really uh, help you. So now, I had a question, why are we going to use the labs? Okay, what I'm going to do later is, even though this course is not covering um, how to create virus, Ted remembers uh, in my CH classes, we did create some viruses. I'm going to ask you to go to Edgar website and download some fake viruses, which is not harmful. Just to see how, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get two virtual machines. I'm going to ask you to build two virtual machines. And one of them, I'm going to ask you to install all the latest patches. And, and one of them, I'm going to ask you to install an old OS with, uh, if possible, no patches. We're going to get a virus, so it's really dangerous, not everybody, not everybody should do that. Uh, Edgar website, yes, David, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the URL for you later, okay? Smooth tech is a good one as well, Olga. Uh, and you're going to see how they behave, and that's why you, as a security professional, should have a lab. So. Look, we all go and download sometimes some stuff. Look, I'm writing, I got my, myself books. I'm totally against downloading pirated books 
or uh, pirated movies or MP3s. But let's be honest, who never did download something like that before? I, I didn't. Uh, most of you, please don't respond. <laughs> this is illegal to do so. Uh, please, you know, you, you, I'm pretty sure this is a good class. All that 4,500 people who signed up to this class is great. They are, we are great people. We don't do that, but we know people they've done it before. Now the question is, as Luke smiles, okay, the question is, why should people give us something for free? You should always ask this question to yourself. Why? Uh, I think first week I mentioned it. They give us free books, or you go and download the free Adobe Pro, where you can, uh, where you can what, uh, where you can um, enable uh, edit a PDF. But they say do not update the software. Why? Because as soon as you do that, Adobe is going to block you from using it. So now you got a threat which Adobe blocking your PDF editing software. But what is the bigger threat? The guys they created this crack for you and give it to you for free. They're gonna attack right at zero day, or they're gonna attack right vulnerabilities of the software and get access to your computer. Uh, again, first week I asked you to read an article in my blog, which is hacking with colors how Turkish government was hacked. They had all the security system in place, but hey, one of the employees did install pirated software. And guess what? What can your uh, firewall do if there is a rootkit and your firewall has been bypassed? Nothing. That's why it's important to implement also the right firewall topology as well as placing the system topology in the right place as well as, that's what I was trying to say, auditing your network activities so you can block this kind of attacks. Uh, look, myself, hopefully I'm going to be doctor of information security in one or two years, okay? Uh, you can be as well, IT master and Charles Stewart has this beautiful education where distance training, okay? You can just, uh, if you have masters or if you got honor degree in the university, you can just uh, do doctorate online. So that's what I'm doing, to be honest. Uh, I got classes online via the Interact website. Uh, and even though I'm soon going to be doctor, I got God knows how many certificates, how many awards. Believe me, I get viruses as well. If, like, I don't know, Tad, if you remember, each of my hacking classes, I crashed my laptop. Because I like to demonstrate real viruses, and sometimes I forget to, to, you know, uh, I forget to disable my virtual machine network configuration, boom, my computer crashes. So, what, but, you know what, that's the only way to learn. You have to play with it, and that's why you should build your virtual machine. Ted, do you remember? Are you still there, Ted? I mean, uh, Ted must be happy, otherwise he wouldn't come to my class again, right? I assume he is. Can you write something back, Ted? Ted? Yep. Okay, cool. He's happy. So, send me your address. I send you a free book. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah, you know why? Why not? What I'm gonna do is, uh, I I can give you a free book from Microsoft Press away. You know, I wrote a couple of books on Microsoft Press. So, let's you know the if you go to our learning. So, uh, James, can you help me with this? The most, you know, it's. We we got the beautiful form, not not too many people using it. Hmm? The person who post the best, you know, the most useful post is gonna win every week a free ebook. Okay, I great. got the vouchers, and all what you have to do is from O'Reilly, Microsoft Press, and I'm gonna send one of my books signed. Uh, actually, I just wrote a book about Windows Server 2012 R2. Okay, so it's a very current book. Uh, I'm gonna sign a soft copy. So you're gonna give me your marks of surface. I'm gonna sign your screen it's because even I don't have a hard copy. I didn't see my hard copy book yet, uh, but I can send you soft copy of the book. Okay, so all what you have to do is go to the forms and post useful articles, answer and be active. And for the next three weeks, you're getting a free ebook. Cool. 
Okay, back to the topic. I have to finish. I got only how many slides left? Not too many. Uh, around 10, 15 slides. So it's important to centralize your firewall and enable documentation. Why? You should be able to see what is going on in your network. So I'm pretty sure most of you heard of the demilitarized zone, which is which we call DMZ. Basically, it's a zone where you place your internet-facing computers, such as your Edge Exchange server, such as your IIS or Apache server, such as your uh, web application server. Why? You don't want your Active Directory computers to be uh, right in front of the uh, public-facing. You put them inside your network in a secured area. So the idea of DMZ is to create different zones for your internal and external network to add one extra layer of security. So what are the advantages of using firewall? If you got up-to-date firewall, then you will have a good level intrusion uh, prevention. You can restrict or limit uh, uh, any resource you like, including internet. You can have uh, privileges can be assigned according to the need, the position of the individual user. And the idea of firewall is to prevent not just viruses or uh, malware, also people and websites from accessing your network. Remember, I was talking about port 80. Now there is many port 80 attacks. So that's why a UTM will have also antivirus installed in your uh, device, which will check also the traffic live. What are the disadvantages? It is usually the main tar uh, target for the attack. It can, you know, prevent legitimate users from accessing legitimate website. A real, ex real life example. Uh, in one of the companies which I used to work before, I was trying to block porn access. Okay, so if you're in IT, you know this is not rude. This is very common, and there is a, a term which is used apparently in porn, which I don't know, which is called ebony, which is basically colorful, uh, you know, porn. So what I've done is I blocked the word eb ebony from the firewall. And I put a special rule. As soon as someone types this, it should send me an email and it should log the IP address. Once it happens, I was at work, I looked, oh my god, this IP address. I checked the, the ATP server, oh, it was my boss's room. I thought someone else, it was a female. I ran straight to her room, oh, you know, I thought there was someone using the computer because her computer wasn't fully monitored. You know, the, she, uh, she was able to go to any website she likes, except that word Ebony. I went to a room. Oh, it was her. Uh, I said, oh, sorry. I closed the door. She called me, Earl, come in. So, first of all, your boss. Secondly, a female. How are you going to say, oh, are you, are you watching porn? No, you know, I was like, mm, okay, why are you here? I said, mm, okay, yeah, I'm here for, uh, you know, I was struggling. She said, why I can't access his website? I said, shit. Oh, excuse my language. Sorry, I didn't say, I, I didn't use this word. I said, oh, no, I'm in trouble. I said, what website? I'm losing my job. She showed me, I'm trying to buy that uh, Tefal Ebony uh, cookware. I can't. It's, it's blocked. I was, whoof. Then I laughed, you know, and explained the whole situation. So sometimes, firewalls are not smart enough to look if it's a cookware or uh, or something else, you know what I mean? So, but most of the time firewall is, I hope you like the story, it's real, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's good to, you know, to have it, sometimes it's not smart enough. So, a firewall does not protect against inside the attacks. Snowden, Mr. Ed Snowden is a very good example. Uh, even a bottleneck condition could occur if all of the connection passes through the firewalls. 
audio is still good. Um, patchy. So some of them, some of you said audio is good, some of you said it's bad. To be honest, uh, probably it's something else. I don't know. <sighs> okay, how how can we bypass firewalls? You're gonna see. You're gonna watch the demos. Okay, I use a couple of tools such as firewalking. What is firewalking? Firewalking is a technique which we use to get information about the remote network. And I will try to see while using firewalking if there is any uh, firewall. Uh, how can I know that? You know, while scanning the network, trying to get the MAC address, uh, trying to see if my packets are dropping off. So you're gonna please watch the recording. I didn't upload it yet. Uh, I didn't upload it for a reason. Why? I wanted to cover the theory first, so you understand what I'm doing. Please uh, see how I grab the banners. Basically, I'm trying to understand what kind of firewalls we used, and then I can bypass it via Exploit DB database. As soon as I identify and notice that it's not up to date, maybe I can bypass it. Maybe I can ask an insider to place a backdoor Trojan, which I can bypass through. Uh, as I said, firewalls has limitations. Uh, like. Not every firewall is capable to stop any kind of virus attack. As Stuxnet was a beautiful example. As you probably heard about it, the Stux virus was not detected for four years. For four years. You know how many days it makes? Uh, 1,460 days. 335,000 hours. Two million minutes it was not detected. I got a beautiful article in my blog, which is written by the core, uh, the, the main architect by F-Secure. Stuxnet was an engineered virus. What is an engineered virus? It was written by not hackers, by some professionals to bypass through to that nuclear station. And as you know, Stuxnet was found in a nuclear station in Iran, which put them six years back. A little virus put them six years back. So what can a firewall do? Nothing. Let's say you're using Lenovo system. I have nothing against Lenovo, okay? But as you know, they it was uh, Lenovo is on at the moment. It's a Chinese company, not American anymore. Uh, Leveno, AV Leveno has a backdoor, hardware backdoor inbuilt. That's why Leveno's are being uh, banned to use in Australian and American governments. Why? They have a backdoor. So what can your firewall or your IPS ideas do? Not much. Uh, so each, each firewall has different uh, limitations. It is your job to test them out. And it is your job to create a different uh, plan just in case they fell down. Okay? So, what is a Bayesian host? I got only a few more slides. It is basically a machine, a secure machine, which which all the service unnecessary services has been disabled, which you only install the required processes. Basically, you set up a bash and host to uh, to have a secure environment because the more stuff you install, the less control you have in a PC or in a Linux machine or an Apple machine. Uh, all what you have to do is a hardware computer and the necessary services like Unix. It has many advantages, such as it will provide you a variety of tools to create batch and host. But it's hard. It's very popular, but uh, as it's open source, it's really much more harder to secure. Windows, it's used widely. You can find zillions of tools, but sometimes not really 
uh, I don't want to say something wrong. Sometimes it's complex to create bash and host, right? And because it's been widely used, the attack pattern are higher. What is a honeypot? Honeypots are basically uh, traps. A uh, there are two, two types of honeypots, uh, production honeypot and research honeypots. Basically what you do is you, you, will tr you create these machines to take attention of hackers to one location. Uh, research honeypots are there, for example, um, you will create these kinds of honeypots to allow an attacker to attack so you can collect some information. It is like um, the thing like most of the researchers they have mouses and like they f they inject AIDS to this mouse mices and they will try to get rid of that AIDS or of this uh, cancer. So first they tried on animals, then on humans, then they sell the pills around. So it has advantages of the more honeypot is out there, the more hackers they attack, the more they learn and create a more secure environment. A production honeypot, it's used to mitigate risk and divert hackers from attacking your real network. So let's assume you, you got a DMS, DMZ, sorry, uh, you create, you know, the first contact point will be automatically your honeypot where you hope that you ha uh, the hacker is trying to come to your system will spend lots of time there. The idea for honeypot is to prevent your network to get attacked and uh, the more the hacker spends time there, the higher chance you got to detect this attack and respond against this attack. You can create honeypot at home, you can just join the honeypot project. Uh, just uh, Google Honeypot Project and uh, we got one in Australia worldwide as well, Honeypot Project. All what you have to do is have a uh, common security tools, little big basic programming uh, language and uh, if I will also show you in a demo how you build Honeypots, okay? Uh, it's very easy, so please watch the demo video. I'm not going to go into details but I'm going to show you how you can be part of a Honeypot Project which will help you to man trap uh, or jail or use pot monitoring. The advantages of finding pot is usually it will collect less amount of data but high value. It will reduce the false positive. It will catch new attacks, reduces the false negative and it is easy. The disadvantages is you need to know to understand the attack patterns. Fingerprinting will give uh, away that using honeypot. I know like Symantec has a commercial honeypot project and it's high because as soon as the hack is not using honeypot, they can just use higher resources to uh, reach and attack you. Uh, I'm going to create a demo video for you which shows you how you can build a honeypot or honey net, okay? It's very easy. Uh, it is basically a mechanism to, as I said, to prevent, to prevent attacks, to detect attacks and it will give you the ability to respond to attacks. So, my contact details are still the same. If you have any questions, please use the forms, learn itmasters.edu.au, uh, otherwise use this contact method to reach me out. Please watch demos, uh, like the Google hacking demo. Please watch the demo, how to detect a firewall, how can you bypass a firewall, and honeypot demo. I did not put this yet, okay? It is uh, nearly 9 p.m. here in Australia, so it's, I'm going to start the upload a little bit later, today, tonight actually, and it should be ready tomorrow, if nothing goes wrong. If not, tomorrow it will be definitely up and running for you, okay? So please watch it. You will not just see the front end, you will see also the back end of the uh, recording. So 
I, I, because uh, seriously, I had I wanted to do some demos tonight, but to be honest, we had too much theory to cover. Uh, do we get any questions? Do we get any questions? Yep, we got some questions. Are you sleeping throughout the night? <laughs> okay. Oh no, my my uh, alarm clock. All right. <laughs> okay, I finished. Oh, ten minutes. Late. Sorry. Uh, it says, where in the network is the best place to put a honeypot? Uh, probably in your DMZ area. Um, that's I assume answers the question. Uh, once I built a honeypot, I didn't record a video yet for that. Okay. Once I build, uh, yeah, I know it was here, but not honeypot. But uh, I promised to show you how to build honeypot. I'm gonna explain you. I will give you some uh, ideas there as well. Okay. But uh, I will place it in a DMZ area. Any other question? Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Jake asked much earlier in the night. Uh, is a sin sweep sneakier than ICMP? ICMP can be easily blocked. You can like probably each traditional firewall will block ICMP traffic. Sync, you can't just block it because TCP requires sync and act. Uh, I do agree. Yes, it is sneakier. Cool. Um, what do we got? Uh, John asked earlier on. I don't understand this myself. Uh, is sampling used to scale um, NIDs uh, and IDS to a manageable scale? Yes, it can be used. Uh, I know a uh, big security organization, they use sampling. What they do is basically they collect the samples uh, and they try to create security mechanism based on the samples. Cool. Thanks. I'll, I'll just grab one more. Um, why place your IPS sensor before a firewall rather than after? Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure you're talking about this light here. Let me just find it. Uh, not this one. Yeah. So, look, firewall and IPS, usually, you know, you can combine them. So, the idea of, I believe, in this necessity detector, the idea of this is, to you know, collect sample data, the, the firewall can detect it, uh, and the IPS then just can see you know before and after. Look, when I do the threat analyzer demo, then I record this. Okay, you're gonna understand why it's important to have a malware analysis before and after. Okay, probably I will be able to answer this question with with visible visible data. So please hang on to this demo. That I'm gonna have a beautiful demo uh, for, for this. Okay, promise. Cool. Thanks. I've actually found a couple more and they're, they're good ones. So Go I'm sorry it. we're running over time but this should be good. As uh, usual, sorry. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Daryl asked earlier, uh, does Erdell agree with man in the middle inspection of SSL encrypted traffic by network owners? So Rather than a, uh, rather than a okay, you, you know, how can I disagree? But saying that, I know SSL like Komodo was hacked, Symantec uh, or VeriSign was hacked. So what is SSL? It's a it is a secure circuit layer which is being secured with uh, certificates. <laughs> so knowing that RSA was hacked, knowing Komodo, GoDaddy. All these uh, security providers were hacked. Is this really uh, the most trustable way? Please answer your own question. Does it make sense what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Although I, th I think I'm, so I've, I haven't done it myself, but the, there's, I guess, firewall software or um, network software that will allow a network owner to actually be the man in the middle themselves. And essentially provide themselves as a as a root CA, and I think that it actually reissues certificates to the clients on the network and means they can snoop on all traffic. Yes, uh, you you just brought that beautiful point up. Like uh, I used to deliver CA classes as well. 
uh, usually the issuing CA, you know, the, even with Microsoft or any other, what they do is as soon as you create your CA, please make sure you shut down the root server, you plug it out of the network, and you put it inside the safe. I'm not kidding. That's a security recommendation. Why? Because nobody can create then uh, more certificates from the root. That's why we use PKIs instead of CAs. Because PKIs are public, you don't want people to come inside your network to do the transactions. So these kinds of security uh, recommendations do exist. By the way, uh, while I'm saying that, I just noticed Look, under my C user downloads, the CA setup was being detected as a Trojan. So if you download can enable, sorry, out of topic, it is not a virus, okay? It is usually a password hacking or sniffing tool. So it is a false positive, false negative actually, a false positive. Yeah, it's not a virus, but it can be dangerous if you don't know how you're using it. Just to let you know, uh, yeah, I just find this as a virus, as there. So if you download it, it's not a virus, okay? And never download it in a host machine. Download always in a test machine. Any other questions which I missed? I can no. see you answered most of them. Yep. Uh, just just all of them actually, not most. Okay. Why would you choose to use an IDS instead of an IPS? Uh, I think I answered this question. Oh. I wouldn't use an IPS without an IDS. Why? One is detection, the other one is prevention. It's like, mm, it's like uh, you know, two brothers which you can't separate. Doesn't an IPS do both? No, one is prevention, one is detection. But UTMs they do both. You know what I mean? Usually these days nobody buys. You know, they they separate it. Why? Uh, you know they don't, they don't want to they have distributed but the the control center is still one. Hmm. All right. Cool. I think we'll leave it about that uh, for tonight, Erdo. Uh, okay. Uh, as James, just regarding Melissa Codzo question. Yep. You know that we can only distribute the sessions that we cover. EC Council give us only rights to distribute the PDFs that we cover online. And usually uh, there is, I think, more than 25 chapters, which is impossible to cover within two hours. I don't know if you noticed, I did cover four modules today, and we had only one hour time, and I spent nearly two hours now. Okay? Why? Because if I don't cover less than this, most of you are not going to understand anything. But EC Council will come with an offer to all of you. If you want to be an ANSA certified person, you will get the all courseware and training materials. It's not been confirmed yet for a really good price. Uh, as it is Chinese New Year, Sean, the Vice President of EC Council, is off. Okay, he's uh, he, but uh, he he they're they're working on a, a good project, and I know uh, our administrators from IT Master is gonna send you the offer details soon. So it's really really good price for all the books and the exams. Uh, our CEO Martin ha Martin uh, is gonna probably send you an email shortly. James, please uh, keep this in your loop as well. Sure. Uh, I know the price has been defined, but he didn't respond back to the final with the final details. I know he's off for the Chinese New Year, so as soon as he comes back, probably we can just send uh, some more details. I don't want to say anything yet. Cool. All right. Thanks, sir. No problem. Any other questions? No, we'll leave it at that for now. We got three minutes. All right. I hope all hours. of you did enjoy. It. I can see seriously we didn't uh, now after I said it's finished we dropped out with people but we didn't drop we didn't lose anybody out which is cool all right thank you very much for joining in please 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 watch the demos as I said I'm not recording them because I uh, you know I'm recording them all for you so you can uh, watch and learn something out of it okay uh, 
and you are you, I'm gonna ask some questions based on the demos. Okay? So uh, for each demo there's gonna be at least one question you exam. Uh, to be honest, uh, James is gonna be very soon in my neck asking for the exam questions. But I'm gonna do this after I finish my own exams. <laughs> okay, James? Yeah. So all right, let's stop the recording. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.